Okay, what's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Energize, brought to you by Forged Irish Stout. Ross, are you intoxicated or something? It's your Tuesday guest, man. Today we are joined by UFC welterweight. He is the one and only Reese Skeletor McKee. We're back, baby. We're back, Reese. How good does it feel? Yeah, you know, it's good to it's good to hear the, that sentence again, and um, it sounds just right. It sounds like what you know I've probably been hearing for the last three years, but to hear other people saying it and now being able to write it, it, it makes a lot of sense. So it's it's good to hear. We yeah. love it, bud. We love it, bud. Congratulations! I'm sure everyone tuning in right now is over the moon for you because once we saw that announcement, like just people were just love it, absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah, people. people yeah, it's so nice. People have been people have been so supportive. You know, I think everybody has a wee bit of uh, of my story and, and their own story. So, you know, if people can find a bit of inspiration in that, then then so be it. Reese, we we obviously want you to tell us exactly how this came about, but I have to take a guess first. Was it when you held up Rod's UC flip flop and called out Dana White? <laughs> Did that was that it? Was that the winner? Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the delay has been they were probably sitting laughing at that video so much <laughs> that it took them a few weeks to get around it. Um, that so, flip flop needs to go into the Hall of Fame in uh, FAI. You know, Rodney's um, Rodney's daughter actually uh, calls it the f- the famous slider now. So, um, but he still wears them, so they're they're not that famous. I thought they'd be framed or something, but um, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. It was like I, you know, I actually had, had a lot of ideas going into that fight of stuff I could have done to maybe make something viral. And none of them happened. And then I remember just talking to Dan Hardy and seeing the slider, and was like, you know what? Let's cut a little, a uh, little video here. Yeah, abs- absolutely. Ross, yeah, it was, it was iconic. No, I've never seen it before. I've never <laughs> seen someone, uh, you know, get the slider out and Lost say that's that's where it needs to be next. It was, uh, it it, it was iconic, Reese. Uh, I, I don't think anyone else could have pulled it off either. So uh, that's class. And Rodney said he's not framing those until you get him his next pair. So uh, he'll frame them after Paris. Yeah, I don't think you'll see it again ever. No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. Reese, tell us this: Where were you when you found out the news, and who broke the news to you that the UFC contract is in the inbox? Yeah, so it's, it's another. It's always a big question, isn't it? It's like, um, so I was home and I was training that night, and it was about half ten, and Graham text, and Graham setting up a facility in uh, in California, and he was asking my opinion on some equipment, and he said do you mind if I give you a quick call? Because obviously we have the equipment at the gym at home as well. So I found it a bit funny and it was a bit late at night. It was like almost one of them ones where I said, I'll catch you in the morning. Um, But I just jumped on the call. It was a quick video call, but he didn't mess about it. He cut the chase pretty quick and he said, I just need to pick your brain of a few things. And I was like, yeah, of course, if I can help, I will. Um, And then he just said, are you free September 2nd? And, um, you know, I just said, you're very sneaky. Um, that's the second time he's got you in a row isn't it yeah second time he's got yeah and and you know what like this one was probably even like even stranger than the first um but it's like anytime i talk to graham if i'm being totally honest anytime you speak to graham on a video call but like we do video call quite a bit when we talk um so anytime you're in a video call you're kind of hopeful but i've had five or six video calls with graham that haven't ended in this way so you can't you know you, you want it, but you never expect it. And then, uh, was Rebecca home at the time when, when this video call took place? Yeah, so again, we were just like, we're watching, we're actually watching Love Island before bed. And, um, Tip, typical, uh, <laughs> carry on in the McKee household. Yeah, typical, <laughs> typical evening in the McKee household for sure. So Rebecca was beside me. So that was nice because the first time I got signed, um, Rebecca was away at work and stuff. And it's nice, like, it's nice to, to let someone else. Um, who that who that call means as much to hear it live, you know, because everybody wants to know what the call's like. But you know, Rebecca will get first grasp of what it was. But it was, yeah, it was a nice moment. It was, it was definitely, definitely cool. Oh, absolutely. And did you go train that night? Well, it was half ten. So oh. the problem was, the problem was, I couldn't sleep. So it was about half five in the morning before I fell asleep. Um, just like so excited so buzzing you want to tell the world but you can't tell anyone even when it was half 10 i couldn't get through to a few people until 
until the morning. So, um, but yeah, it was just, it's nice like that. Them first twelve hours, and I actually said this to Kaylin yesterday, I, like giving a message is like to enjoy the moment now because once the whole world knows, it's no longer just your own news; it's everybody's. Um, mm-hmm. So it was nice to enjoy it by myself for a few hours as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I ran course. around the house with the belt and the Energize glasses on and, and <laughs> aimed to the flip flop gods. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's crazy what goes through your head, you know, and how much. And I even said this to Paul last night, like, it, feel, it felt for ages like nothing was happening um, until everything happened and everything changed. And then you can't even remember the time that you were frustrated because it's all now just changed. And and Reese, like, what's the difference between this time and last time when you get that call? Like, did did, did you have any different feelings? Like, yeah, like this time, this time was like, but the time when the time when they called me at the first time, it, I didn't even think, like, it felt like I didn't really feel. How would you say it's it's hard to describe it? Like, I didn't really even think about having the fight. If that makes sense, I didn't even think about everything to do with it. All I was like, oh. I'm in the UFC now, like, this is, you know, amazing. But I didn't really even think about the fight, where this time it's like, oh, now I get to compete in the UFC again. It's very different, like, I'm here to fight and compete now. Uh, you know, the first time maybe was a wee bit, like, as a 24-year-old, a bit more naive, you know, I, I just, I was happy to be there and be involved, yeah. where now it's like, I don't care about being there and being involved, like, I'm there to win and, and move into the top one in the world, like, that's where I want to be. Yeah, it, it's it's one of those things where like after after you beat Jimmy in Dublin, you're like you almost felt like that phone call should have been instantaneous at times. You know what I mean? You were I was like I was like, what more can that fella actually do? And then you know we were looking at the Cage Warriors roster, and I was like, after those last two wins, Burlington and Wallhead, I was like, there's no one else for that fella to actually beat. I was like, it has to happen, and like. I think the suspense and the delay, it was actually, I don't know, you tell us, but was it getting to a make or break point where you were like, right, am I going to have to do another Cage Warriors fight or, like, am I hanging on? Like, what what was the time frame on, like, what was the what was the waiting period? Because it was probably getting close to booking something else. Yeah, so me and Pat were, were kind of talking about it actually the week before and we were looking, it was actually Darren Stewart fought and I can't remember who, who oh, he beat that other guy. I beat that guy, um, <laughs> and I was like, he ever, he ever, like you know, maybe came out top there. I would have maybe went for a middleweight fight to try and make a bit of noise. Um, so we were looking at different different options. None of it seemed that attractive, you know. Um, I never looked at other promotions. Still, like, never had anything serious, you know. I knew they were there on the sidelines and they were, they were um, asking questions, but. I knew if anything, I would have went and done one more Cage Warriors, and if it didn't happen then, you know, I maybe would have had a different, different headspace. But I always knew it was going to happen. I just, I was getting to the stage where I thought it might have to be one more. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, uh, what when was Dublin? Dublin was was it April. April. Yeah. So like April twenty ninth. Yeah. Yeah, and now we're July. So like, he, he, there was that gap of time, and I was like. When's the call coming? When's the call coming? You know what I mean? But look, I suppose April to September turn around now, now that you're fighting in Paris, France, like that's lovely. And are you happy that you're fighting in Paris, France as well? Because I suppose it's not as far to travel for some of your family and friends to get over the fight as opposed to if you were in Vegas, like Or Fight Island. Be, or Fight Island. Like that's obviously a much longer, more expensive and more difficult journey to make. Yeah, like there's so there's so many reasons why this fight plays into my hands. It's like, you know, we're talking. You're traveling to Europe. If you know, I, I believe there's a very little time difference, if any time difference. You know, it's a three hour flight. It's you know very like very like home. Um, so there's not there's not a lot of like changing parts. Uh, with anything, you know, you're not traveling halfway across the world. So, like, I, I'm delighted I'm fighting in Paris. To be honest, um, we were actually in Paris at the start of the year after the Jimmy fight, which is which makes it all even stranger. Like we were in Paris, you know, celebrating the, the Jimmy fight. And then if you told me there and then that that would have been where I made my debut in two or three months, like, you know, you just probably wouldn't have believed it. But lo and behold, here we are. So everything comes around full circle and it's you know what, it's probably the perfect place to, to make the debut. You know, I think ever since you actually uh, put the ring on on the finger of Rebecca, there it's all come up, Reese McKee. You know, uh, you know, you, you're back in the UFC, Bambino on the way. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Once you put a ring on that finger, it's all come to fruition. Uh-huh. So shout out to Rebecca. 
Yeah, shout out to Rebecca. It's all coming together, you know, it, it is like it's um it's one of them things that's like, you know, once once one thing in your life goes so right, like it just takes a huge knock on effect. So um, you know, but all this stuff has been in the works for a long time and I think even like people keep saying why is Irish MMA taking off and it's it's not taking off, it's it's been in the works for the last 12 13 14 years but now 2023 and 2022 maybe is is the year it all came up came afloat welcome <laughs> yeah. back, back welcome back to the show <laughs> reese this time around what type of fighter is the uc getting from reese mckee this time around yeah it's, it's um it's totally different it's and of course i'm going to say this but like my approach is is so different. You know, I took the I took a long break after leaving the UFC the first time. I developed, I upskilled, and um, I learned a lot of patience, which is probably my main asset right now is my patience and composure. Um, you know, I've just I'm I'm just chalk and cheese. I actually watched a bit of the Morano fight um, yesterday, and I laughed at it because it's so different. Like it's just not who I am. Uh, but I think what people are going to see is like that maturity as a fighter, and you know. Just someone who who's who's where they where they're meant to be now, not a young kid in a candy shop with you know big white eyes. It's this is very much my workplace now, and, and that's going to be very different. That's going to be a show a very different side of me. You forgot to mention and a world champion. <laughs> I love it. Yep, and the world champion. Yeah, of course. So I've like I've learned a lot. You know, I again it's been pretty much three years um, from that last stint. So you know a lot of changes in three years yeah absolutely and like i even think uh looking from when you made your ufc debut last time to your last fight like even your frame has changed so much like you you've grown into your body even more and like i feel like all your skills are so much sharper and from watching um your next opponent uh and when he was fought, when he fought Jack Madalena, i, I re watched that fight there uh only the other night and i was watching it and I just thought Reese's boxing is going to be too much for this guy. Um, like I just felt like your fundamentals are so sharp, and I feel like this is a, obviously a far better first fight back in the UFC than uh, being like right fight Hamza on like two days' notice. Get in there, don't worry about it. Uh, as opposed to this time, like you're coming in and you know you're getting plenty of time to prepare, and I can't wait to see the best Reese McKee show up on the night. Yeah, like this is a nice fight. Like you know, um, Ange is like. You know he's he's from a very good gym and he's um he's well versed and he's an explosive athlete and stuff. But um I think when this comes down to the bread and butter fundamentals of um of martial arts, I'm just better. Um you know that combined with a bit of maturity and a bit of um uh, a bit of patience makes me a nightmare fight for him. Uh, this is a very similar fight to the Morano fight when I came in with the wrong approach. Um but done with the right approach here, I would have smashed Morano. Um, so like it's all about approach here but people will see on, on September 2nd uh, it's going to be a very fun night Yeah, now, uh, it's, yeah well, so, but, something else we have to look forward to as well is actually being fans in the arena Reese. like how many people are you expecting to bring over to Paris France well to be let's call a spade a spade in this one it's, it's hard because the tickets are so hard one they're hard to get your hands on and if you do get your hands on them they're a bomb so um you know, I'd like to. I would love to say a hundred, hundred fifty people, but uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Sure, I'm really not sure. Um, I know there will be. I'm going to say at least twenty people with me. Um, but who knows? It's just not as accessible as as we would have wished. Maybe, but it's fine. Yeah, but sometimes the tickets fall the way the tickets fall, and it's not as. It's not as. Uh, it's not like you have your sort of uh, section like you might do in Cage Warriors. It's uh, like everyone wants to go see. UFC, especially in Paris, it's only I think it's second show there, so it's going to yeah. be uh, it's going to be a, a packed out house. It's going to be an absolute electric card, especially with a uh, few Irish, maybe one more to go. And uh, sp- speaking of maybe one more to go, obviously, uh, Anne's trains in uh, Kilcliffe MMA, and uh, a good friend of yours, Paul Hughes, did a stint over there recently. Uh, <laughs> was it was there a spy in the camp there? Did he was uh, Anne's there when Paul was there? Did you see him? Yeah. Paul's up for Ange, isn't he? <laughs> you know what? We, we we paid Paul so much money that I don't know if I'll be able to fuel my training camp this time because we paid Paul to go over to Killercliffe just for an inside look. Um, <laughs> so all my money spent. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know what? It's it's Killercliffe such a such a stable of fighters, and I don't believe Paul one knows who he is or two seen him or three talked to him. Then that just shows 
you know, the size of this team. Like it's like all these all these teams in the world, which effectively they're all the best teams in the world, but there's mm. so many people. It's um yeah, there's so many people. It's what else can I say? Paul Paul didn't see him, I don't believe. <laughs> In fairness, I think half the welterweights on the roster trying out to uh, kill Cliff at the moment. Yeah, 100%. So, um, yeah, Paul had no inside scoop for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is, Kellen Lockran is now after being signed as well. He's going to be on the card as well. And uh, Virgin Media Sport is going to be showing the the, the fight live as well on July, uh, sorry, September 2nd. So, I mean, like the, the buzz is going to be unbelievable. Look at the hype Sean is after getting all this week for UFC London as well. Um, Reese. Can you foresee a UFC Dublin that happen in the near future? Yeah, I think it's one of them things. It's like we've, we've all been hopeful for it. We've all wanted it, but we had no real grounds to make the noise. Um, where now we have, you know, I know is it four, is it five, five people signed with a few more to go. Um, it will now just be at the point where you have to realise that the UFC signed the Irish for this card. So I 100% would imagine and I know March or April of next year would be we could be lying in Dublin, so um be unbelievable. It'd be so good. And well, uh, also also Reese, who in your opinion should be the next person signed by the UFC? Yeah, it's, it's this is an easy answer, isn't it? It has to be Paul Hughes. It's like you know, like Paul Hughes is just he's just the guy. He's next he's the final piece of this Irish puzzle for right now. Like, you know, there's obviously a few more people coming now or coming soon, but if there's anybody to be signed that it has to be Paul. Um, the level he is, the the patience he's had, you know, he, he's a very deserving kid. And he's one of them people that's like, you know, Paul was one of the very first few people I rung after I got the news. And, you know, just such a motivational guy, but a, a real guy that's as happy for everybody as he'd be for himself. So the man deserves the reward. And it's not the reward for being a good person, the re- reward for being someone that could go in there and challenge the top five straight away. Yeah, I actually uh, fight- reached out to Paul yesterday because when I saw Kalen got signed, so I was like, I was like, but well, don't worry, it's your destiny to get there. Like you will get there because like the the way the way yourself and Kalen got signed in such short succession, like obviously his phone was blowing up as well, being like, when's it your turn? When's it your turn? And that's obviously going to be hard for him. You know what I mean? To be getting those messages and, you, and not like- have the contract in the door, yeah. Like I was with Paul last night when he found out and stuff, and, and like again he was delighted for Keelan yeah. too. But it's um, like I said to him, or as I said to you, nothing for me was happening. There was nothing moving until yeah. I got signed, and then everything changes. And before you know it, you can't remember the time you're frustrated, and it'll be the same with him. Like when he gets signed, he'll not remember the nights. You know, he was thinking, "When am I getting signed?" Like you don't like as humans, we don't remember that stuff. So. It will come, and you know it. It just at the minute it doesn't make sense, but it will very soon. Yeah, a fight I would definitely like to see Paul in is Paul versus Morgan Charrier in Paris as well on the card. I think that would be a fight to make. Do you see one Paul in? Do you see one Charrier in? I think that is the fight to make. So uh, Liam Shannon, Pat McAllister, uh, that is definitely a fight we want to see. Yeah, I don't know what's yeah, called. Like... Guam, Reese? Yeah, that a hundred percent. Like, get it done, sign them both. Yeah, absolutely. Me, me and Baz want to buzz it over to Paris as well with, with our berets on, our oh, Irish berets. Yeah. We all go to war. <laughs> the beret. Yeah, the, you better believe it. I'd like just to touch on what uh, Baz said about <laughs> UFC Dublin. I think uh, this weekend next year will be the tenth anniversary of McGregor Brandao, which was the first ever UFC Dublin. So I think it's like next July. I know they normally do London in July, but I think it's the perfect time to do a Dublin fight night. And I think it'll be an absolutely epic occasion. You'd have maybe we do it in like Crow Park or something. You have McGregor, Reese, Ian Gary, Paul, Kalen, get Kiefer on there, Sean on there, get Danny McCall like Lee Hammond on there, like you know, what I mean, like, there's there's eight or nine fighters who are probably going to be signed to the UFC by this time next year. Like, I think it's very, very feasible to get the job done. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, I imagine doing croak, It'd be crazy, wouldn't it? It'd you, be would insane. You, would you would you be available for that, Reese? Oh, I'll be available. I'm sure I'll be available <laughs> for it. Yeah. I'm sure I'll make it work. Absolutely, oh, love it. Uh, like obviously we're going to just wrap things up because you have to go train and kick some ass um, but Reese, look it's always brilliant talking to you when that news came out like we were over the moon for you after seeing your like the comeback 
like having having you on doing the face offs, promoting your fights, like uh, like hanging around with you, like it's like you're the first ever person to have been let go by the UFC, but you've now shown everyone who's like building their careers now that you're at getting back into the UFC, and there is always only one person who can do that, and that is yourself. You'll be put in Irish MMA history for doing that. Uh, Ross, like these glasses and the flip flop, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, for for all those non Irish MMA fans, it's going to be a you all must have forgot moment come uh, September second. Reese McKee's coming back and he he's going to make a statement. I can feel it in my bones. Uh, and you know one thing you're guaranteed in life: death, taxes, and Reese McKee finishing fights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, that's so true. We need that in a t shirt for, for par. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I'll take 0% commission. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Even better. <laughs> well, Reese, is there anything else you want to say? Because, like, loads of people are tuning in now. Like, I mean, seeing your comeback now is going to definitely inspire people. I have a feeling there's going to be uh, a lot of talk about this in the build up to your fight on on uh, September 2nd. It, it will be on Virgin Media Sports. I think the whole country is going to be supporting you. So, uh, we'll give you the final words. But. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's nice, and you've you said a lot of nice words that I probably couldn't talk. But like everybody in in Irish MMA has played their part, you know, from from myself obviously from the gyms till um, yourselves have played a big role. You know, if we don't have these platforms to talk and voice our opinions on, you know, the days we're excited or the days we're grumpy, then you know we couldn't make the noise to the UFC or whatever promotion people end up to. So, you know, if if anything like you know we 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 as fighters should thank you as well for giving us that that uh, place so and um, i appreciate all the support you to give me this is number one bullshit <laughs> <laughs> ross take us away bud uh, uh, Re- reese uh unbelievably delighted for you both on a professional and personal level you're the man we love you we always have loved you can't wait to see you back in that ufc gear it's going to be unbelievable uh yeah representing all your friends family and country it's going to be absolute whopper night uh, if you haven't watched this make sure to like share subscribe and as always stay, stay energized. energized energized shot up the irish and sussing you guys a couple of times i've seen a couple of clips i think you've done some interviews with dylan moran and that I, I, I saw so keep going keep up the good work guys